Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in, saints. God bless you. Today is a fabulous day, so to God be the glory. He gets all the glory for us to get to be here today in the precious and mighty name of Yeshua Hamashiach. So as you know, I welcome you here today to, to be with us, and we always are going to start in prayer, and today is no exception. So, Father, today in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this message. Let it be one of hope, encouragement, uplifting. Let it, Father, be filled with love, peace, joy, liberty, humility. We come before you to receive. We thank you that there's no distractions, no interfering spirits, and nothing irrelevant or corrupt that would go forth. We thank you, Father, for the peace, your shalom, that flows through us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know... When we look at the times that we are in, I'm sure some of you might just be thinking, what has happened? And I too have found myself in this place of wondering where we, what exit did we take? Like we took the wrong exit and who knows exactly how far long ago, but we got off the wrong exit a long time ago. And, and so as I was just praying and talking to the Lord about where we are and certain scripture, and, and I had a laugh because there's one scripture that the Lord knows that I have this, this love-hate relationship with this one scripture. And it's not even the scripture itself, but it was so profound in going through and reading it. And the first time I ever read it, I read it. And then, and then I kind of skip through that one to get to the ones after that. And then he may go back again and read it and read it and read it. I'm going to share it with you because this is so profound in what God has done. And I might have a different viewpoint on the scripture, but we shall see. I'm in an, in an NIV and I like the way that this, that it reads in this NIV, um, and it is Jeremiah 29, 11. You probably don't even need to turn your Bibles because you know the scripture by heart. Even if you were born again like a minute ago, you probably know it because you've heard it before. But Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, Here's, here's why I love and, and, and have this, 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 this issue with the scripture. It's actually, as I said, not even the scripture. I love the scripture for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord knows the plans. They're all good, not to give you harm, not to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. That's all great. Love that. And most people are like, God has a plan for your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, Sister Christian, oh, what kisses? What's the plan? Well, I don't know, but God has a plan for your life. Well, what good does it know you to know that there's a plan and not know what it is? Like, oh, I'm going on a date tonight. Where are you going? I don't know. What time is he picking you up? I don't know. Is he picking you up? I don't know. What are you going to wear? I don't know. Well, um, what do you know? I don't know. <laughs> That's why that scripture is the one that is like, there's a plan for your life. There's a plan and it's a good one. How are we not doing something about getting it? That's the part that baffles me. It's so cliche. God has a plan for your life. Yes and amen. But here's the next few verses. And then I'm going to go back. And then it says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me. And I will listen to you. You, you will seek me. And find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and bring you back from captivity. Okay, so it's us that got to do something. The plan is there. What's the plan? There's this gap. There's the gap of God knows the plan. We don't. We got to get with him to get the plan so we can then implement it. All makes sense so far. Okay, Lord. So we see all this. And I always try to like get to the 12, 13, and 14. But then he takes me back. I'll show you this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Okay. Plans to prosper you. Okay, and not to harm you. Okay, plans to give you hope and a future. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you hope and 
a future and hope and a future. What's hope? <laughs> What's hope? What does hope mean? God's got plans to give us hope, but what is hope? What is hope? We know faith is faith, faith is evidence of, of substance of things not seen. We know that fear is, is false evidence appearing real. We we know that by our faith, uh, this happened for Noah. This happened for for um, Abraham. This was for Rahab. Uh, this is for Julie. All of these things, like by our faith. But okay, God's given us hope. But what is what is hope? Not the hope and change, blah, blah. No, but what, what is hope? And where is it? And how do we get it? And what does it do for us? And then how do we run with it? What happens when we get it? What happens if we don't have it? Where do we go? So you kind of start to see this one little word in this scripture really changed what, what I was, what, what and how I was viewing this. So I start doing a little more digging. What is, God, you've given us hope. But obviously, we're not receiving it because if we were receiving it, we would not have Chaz. Let's just be clear. Like, we would not have takeovers within cities with more stringent rules, regulations than what the government has in place. Like, they are literally beating people up for trying to leave. They, they are raping women in this area. They, they have a flag. They are deporting people. And then, the, and then these smart people are trying to, trying to grow a garden uh, with some dirt on top, of, uh, on, on top of cardboard. I mean, come on. We, we got it. Like, if we had hope, we, we would be far surpassing the nonsense. Okay. Now, whether or not you believe in nonsense, that's all on you. But when we look at this, it's nonsense. Like, who? You can't grow anything on cardboard. <laughs> so, John, John four. So I'm talking to the Lord and seeing that that if we really were walking in hope and we had received it, we would not be walking in such a level of disarray. There would not be the statistics that continue to demonstrate that the millennials are the most purposeless and the most depressed of all generations. And no, no hope. Where'd the hope go? I want to take you to a scripture, but I believe that I had the wrong scripture. This tends to happen. I'm going to find the right scripture that I'm looking for. Go with me to Jeremiah. I'll come back to that one in a minute. Jeremiah 14. Jeremiah 14. We're going to the left a little bit. If we are in a place where a country looks like it does, it's very evident that we have lost our way, that we don't have what we need to, to be thriving as a society. And I'm not talking about economically. That's, that's great. But you can have all the money in the world and be miserable. I, many, you can see that. Look at the people. Look at, look at, look at, look at those that are pushing so much hatred. Yet they got all this money. They're walking in hopelessness. But it tells us this, Jeremiah 14, verse 22 do any of these worthless idols of the nations bring rain? Do the skies themselves send down showers? No, it is you, Lord our God. Therefore, our hope is in you. For you are the one who does all this. Okay. Great. But what's hope? He's telling us, okay, our hope is in you. It's in you. But what is it that is in him? I kept on digging. 27 times the word hope in the New Testament, quawa, and hupomino in Greek. And it means to wait, to be patient, to endure. 
none of which <laughs> I can say that I am a champion at. To wait and to be patient, those are like challenges, and to endure. We know that as we, as we overcome and, and consider it pure joy, the trials that we face, that they help us to perfer, persevere and be perfected in maturity of our faith. It tells us this the beginning of James. But what are we enduring and waiting for? What exactly is this hope? So I'm, I'm still toying this around on my whiteboard. Hope. What is hope? These, this, isn't, this, isn't like a, this isn't doing it for me. I'm like, Lord, what is hope? This is what the Lord showed me. Hope. His overflowing promises endure. His overflowing promises endure. Or we might say his overwhelming promises endure because they're so good. But his overflowing promises endure. Now I'm on to something. Now I can move in a way of recognizing that there's something. And, and we might also infer that it is trust. But without hope or without trust, we really aren't going to have faith. Without, without trust, what hope do we have? And if you don't have faith, you're really not going to be hopeful because what are you putting your faith in? And, and so we got these three things. It kind of makes it a little triune here. So he's showing me his overflowing promises endure. Okay, now I'm on to something. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians. Five, eight. Now, but this is not the right, oh, here it is. Yes, it is. But 5.8, I was reading 5 and kept thinking this is not making sense for what I'm looking for. 5.8 at 1 Thessalonians. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. Well, salvation is his name. The name of Jesus is salvation. We put him on, we're renewed by, we are, we are renewed by the transforming of our minds. Do not conform to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. He is the hope of our salvation. He, his overflowing promises endure, which is the hope that we now have overflowing as we accept him. Okay, so now check this out. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. So now I'm really getting excited because now I can see that we're living in such a world that's filled with such hopelessness. And, and regardless, the world is going to be living in hopelessness until they get with God. And then that's where the hope is. We're going to be living in a, in a, in a, in a new, maybe pink bubble of hope. And, and it might sound a little bit funny, but, but work this out with me. So, so 2 Timothy, or whatever color you like, 2 Timothy 2. And it's not that we're ignorant. It's that we are moving in a way to recognize that sometimes we have to move the things out. If we conform to the ways of this world, we will begin to think like the world. We will begin to operate like the world, angry, depressed, sad, um, lacking in glutathione, lacking in, in L-glutamine, lacking in trace minerals, lacking which, which as they removed all of the minerals out of the water, those things are increasing all the way to depression and anger and all these things we're experiencing in society. In Iceland, they don't have those problems because they left all the minerals there. So 2 Timothy 2, when we don't have Jesus, we have no hope. And I'm going to explain that in just a second too. 2.10. Therefore, 
I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. In Christ Jesus, there is eternal glory. There is hope in him. He is the helmet of our salvation, protecting our heads. So we are on track. We know it's the neck that turns the head, but excuse me, now we are moving in a way that when we decree that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, we now are moving in agreement with the hope that is within us to now stand firm on God's word and know that when we are standing firm, when we are moving forward, that we are doing so with a purpose that will help us to move into the new levels that we're moving into in Christ on this earthly realm so that as we inherit the kingdom, we're moving in that direction. Hopefully this is making sense. Now, I want to give you some facts about hope. Because the more that I'm looking at this, the more that I see that we really need hope. Not not hope for hope's sake, but hope for our own sake for now, for the expansion of God's kingdom, but to raise up a new generation for Christ, to give people a purpose to live. Because there, the depravity of this world is not going to go away until people's hearts come to Jesus. There is no, there is no other way. And let me tell you these facts about hope. Number one, only through Jesus can you have hope. You cannot circumvent Jesus to, to get to God and think you're going to have hope. There is no such thing. You've been deceived. Just telling you. New Age will do that. You, only, you will only have hope in Christ Jesus. And I pray that you are ready to receive him today. There is no hope in anything else. Your car will fail you. The people in your life will probably fail you. That job will fail you, especially when you, when you come out speaking truth and you stop drinking the Kool-Aid. You might just not lose your job. Um, your religion will fail you. There is nothing in this world that will suffice except for Jesus. The second thing I want to share with you today is only through Jesus will you hope endure. There's no other way. He is our salvation. Without him, you have no salvation, which means you really have no hope, which, which, where are you going to go without that? Many people that continue to deny Jesus are hopeless. Their hopelessness is what we are seeing out in cities across this nation. They need Jesus. They need fathers in the home and they need Jesus. They need a way. They need hope. They need something to live for. And building fake gardens on cardboard is not the way. They need something greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Without Jesus, there is no hope. Only through Jesus will hope endure. Only through Jesus will promises come. Philippians 3.20, let me demonstrate this. There is no confidence in the flesh, none. Let me read this to you. 3.20 of Philippians but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. When we put our hope in Christ, we have something to eagerly await for, something that is worth enduring for, something that is worth standing firm with and for and by. Those that have rejected this precious word, they know not what they do. They have no clue. They've been so far deceived by the indoctrination of the devils. And we already know in 1 Timothy, I believe it is, it tells us, don't be taught by demons, doctrines of demons. 1 Timothy 4. They fall and pray. Therefore, they have no hope. But we see our citizenship is in heaven, not this earthly realm. That should give you hope to recognize that we're here for a short time and poof, we're not here anymore. Praise God. For those that choose to reject Christ, well, good on you. But you see, our hope comes in him and the promises come through Jesus. I will share with you some of the promises in just one moment. Jesus is our hope. Putting your hope in anything but him 
will lead to hopelessness and a life with no hope. If you go back up to verse 18, Philippians 3.18, For, as I have often told you before and now, tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. Well, we know this. These poor, innocent, ignorant, lost souls, we might not say innocent, but they're ignorant, created Chaz, and they got looted by the homeless. The homeless took all their hamburger, and now they're calling, will you give us some nuts and some fruits? They're like the granola, the fruits, the nuts, and the flakes. And, and they're asking, will you bring us some fruits because we were looted by the homeless? Oh, but you looted the city, and now you're being looted by the looters. Well, the irony. But their destiny is destruction because they have no hope. They set their focus on the things of this earthly nature. Our hope is in here, up above. It tells us in, in the book of Matthew 6.33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all shall be given unto you. When I begin to look at hope, it changed when I start to recognize that hope is his overflowing promises endure. That is a statement of fact that his overflowing promises endure. As we endure, his promises endure. As I declare, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And as I stand on his word, enduring, patiently, waiting, believing, and knowing and trusting that by my faith it so shall be done, my hope and anticipation for what is to come grows. And, and I'm not just a lost soul that's throwing to and to and fro, waiting for what's going to happen. Maybe, maybe such and such a day. Maybe I might wake up. Maybe I might not. But you know what? I might, I might have a, I might have a, um, a beyond, beyond beef, fake, fake burger with nothing in it, but soy that makes me sick. In Christ, we have all things. You see, if Jesus is in you, hope too is in you. Because his promises endure. You cannot get access to his promises without him. There's a door you must go into. There is, there is a step you must take. Those that refuse, refuse to cross over, they are denied all of the hope of his glory. They are denied every single blessing is rightfully so. There are certain things that are granted. Even the five virgins knew that they were ready and they sought. And guess what? The door was open for them. We know that in, in the book of Philippians, I want to tell you this, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. I can do all this. I can stand firm in the hope of his glory. I can stand firm believing that the promises are yes and amen. I can stand firm knowing, believing, and accepting that I'm living in his will. And that, that, that because of what he has for me, I, I have value. I have purpose. I have life everlasting. You see, let me tell you the things about, about the promises of God. I'm not going to get into all of them because they're so vast. But you see, what are we hoping for? What, what, are, what are you really hoping for? Have you ever thought about what are you hoping for? Well, you know, I hope I make it, I hope I make it through the day. Praise God, I understand that. <laughs> there are some times it happens far too often. Lord, I just, just hope that I can just get through this. My, my college students, they say, I hope I can get through this speech without falling over, passing out, or fainting. I get it. But let me tell you something. There are 23 unconditional promises in the New Testament. There are 29 New Testament promises about future. There are 29 New Testament promises about prosperity. There are 110 promises for spiritual blessings waiting just for you. There are 43 unconditional Old Testament promises. There are seven Old Testament promises for families. There are seven Old Testament promises concerning nations. There are 93 individual promises in the books of Psalms, or in the book of Psalms. This is why we pray the Psalms daily, because of the promises that are embedded within that book. There are 86 other Old Testament promises for each one of us as we walk in hope, as we walk in trust, as we walk 
in those enduring promises as we walk in his love, as we walk in faith, that by our faith we can walk in hope. Let me just give you some of them. What do we have hope for? A future. We're coming full circle. If I go back to my favorite scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. When he reads it so clearly, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Maybe today is the day that you say, you know what, Lord, I would like to know the plan. I would like to know my future. I would like to receive that hope so I can receive my future. We have promises and we can hope in the fact that his, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. We can have hope that he makes the impossible possible. There are things that God has done in my life that, that are miracles. There are things that God did in my brother Tom's life that let me explain this to you, the most magnificent, magnificent testimony that I ever could have shared. And yes, I know it was a long one. However, I still believe that it was worthy to be shared at that length. And the one thing that I know that forever changed his life was that he now has hope, something he never had before. Think about what you could do if you have hope for the future. Think about what it feels like when someone believes in you and knows that, that you can do it, that you've got this, that God is right there, that Jesus is right there, that there is someone saying, yes, yes, go get it. You've got this. God is with you. You can do this. Yes, you're going to make it. There's nothing that can't stop you because he makes the impossible possible. He made death what would seem impossible. He made overcoming death possible. He did it. If he did that, what else would he do for us? What else would he do? His promise is that he abides in us as we abide in him. All we need to do is get there. All we need to do is move in a place of saying, I'm here. We can have hope and believe and rest in the fact that his gifts are good in accordance with James 1, 7. Now, I kind of like that. I mean, I don't like you receiving bad gifts. And let me tell you something. I've been given some bad gifts. I'll just, just share with you just for a moment. I won't take up too much time. But I've, I mean, I'm telling you bad gifts. Like, for example, my birthday. I was taken to Walgreens to pick out a candle for my own birthday present. And the person I was with, like, thought that I had no clue. That's a bad gift. That's bad. It's bad on my birthday, too. That's bad. Jesus doesn't do that. He will give you the best gifts. He will give you the best gifts. The best gifts come with Jesus. The best. Not the worst. Not the least. The best. And that candle, I picked it out and it was still bad, even though it was like it was like the 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 best of the worst, you know? What do you do? I mean Don't do that. His gifts are good. As we step in him and hope, guess what else we get? As we step in to realize that his overflowing promises endure, we will inherit the earth. We will have a reward in heaven. We won't lose our reward. We shall receive the crown of life. How awesome is that? We already know to him who overcomes is granted the right to sit with him. And we are given hope and promise that Jesus will do it. How do we know this? Because he already did it. He already did it. We can look at this world and see that the, the world is filled with hopelessness. But we can look to the cross and see that with him all things are possible. We can begin to see those things that you've hoped for for however long. Don't give up. Don't give up. I see it daily. I see it and I hear it from students that contact me. I have students that take classes from prison. Like they didn't give up. They, have, they know they, they've been given another chance. And they're wanting to live. The Toms of this world are given a chance. They don't want to mess it up. When we put our hope in the Lord, 
You're going to see miracles. You're going to see signs. You're going to see, you're going to see healings. You're going to see things that you never thought would be possible. So if I were to ask you today, what are you hoping for? Many people say, well, I sure hope so. Now it's time to know so. Know that your hope is filled with his overflow of promises that endure in your life. For you, because that is the God that we serve. And if it wasn't, I surely would not be here telling you or testifying to it. I would tell you exactly what he is, because what do I ever lose? But I can't do that because I know what he's doing. I know what he's done in my life and I know what I'm believing God for. I know the faith that I have and I know what I'm hoping for. And I'm hoping that the people that are hopeless become hope filled in Christ. I'm hoping that we are all able to see that with Christ, every single thing is possible. That with and in Christ, that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That we can walk in love, moving with the faith of a mustard seed. To see that, that, that children will be reunited with their families as I was after 30 years of separation. To see the, the love moving through, through one to another, regardless of, of ethnicity. Regardless of the pains of the past, I'm hopeful that we can walk in forgiveness and recognize that no one today did anything to, 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 to someone else today that, that happened a hundred years ago. Because if we are all about that age, we look real good. But we, when, I'm hoping that there will be a day when we can open our ears and eyes and listen and deal and get delivered of the pains of the past so we can walk together looking at people in the image that they were creating. I'm hoping that people will stop apologizing and slapping. God in the face because of the way that God created them on purpose, by purpose, for purpose, because God is a purposeful God. I am hopeful and walking in hope that he is such the great God that he is that more people will come to know him and truly know him and walk the earth testifying of his greatness. I am hopeful that these next generations are coming forth to proclaim him and that the indoctrination of the devil of the devils will be rebuked one at a time and that these young people will proclaim Christ and I am hopeful that Chaz will be disassembled and the kids will go home and eat a proper meal. I'm hopeful that, that we will walk in love and move in a society where we can walk hand in hand because we love one another, not because we are politically being correct and using one another for political gain and more sales at the, at the dollar store or at the, at the registers. I'm hopeful and I'm walking in hope that as we come to know him, that our country looks like a country that, that knows him, but I'm hopeful for the people that will represent him, that we can all come before him and say, I love you. I'm hopeful that when we get down on our knees and fight this war on the floor, that we will be transformed forever because of his goodness, because of his greatness, and because of his godness. That we will walk in that and let that be what clothes us. That we are clothed with strength and dignity in white. And I'm hopeful that you too are hopeful what you are hopeful for so we can stand and encourage those who have no hope because I guarantee you that with hope and with Christ is as in our hope all things are possible there is nothing that cannot be done through Christ he is our salvation he is our hope and his overflowing promises endure and it is time that we get up and say yes and amen because those are the answers his promises are yes and amen and i pray that you are encouraged today that you are increased with a new level of faith a new level of trust a new level of hope for this place and this position that we are in today and as you walk in that that you share it and that you have the overflow of joy and the oil of gladness that is seething from you and that others recognize that while they're sad that you share with them and that they too will recognize Recognize the contagiousness of hope, which is the glory of our salvation. To God be the glory. That, saints, is how we are going to move things, sharing the goodness of God and the hope of his coming with every single person that we encounter. And I pray today, if that is you, that you receive it today. There is no better time for you to come to know Jesus. It is not a tomorrow thing. This is not a not now time because you need to go do whatever. No, 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 no. This is a now time. Your hope tank, your love tank, your faith tank needs to be filled now with Christ. There is no other time. Don't deceive yourself. Don't kid yourself and don't you dare walk away. You know you'd be walking away from, from the most magnificent relationship of your life and I know that you're smarter than that. This is a time now to pause for this cause 
which is your precious life, your precious soul, your precious future that God created and ordained before the foundation of the earth. When he said, for I declare the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you prosperity, not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Will you accept that today? Will you accept hope? Will you accept him? Will you accept the future? This is a time that is, if this is you, and of course, if we were in, if we were in, in the stadium filled, I would be calling every single person from the top, every single person, come on down, come on down. And I would pray and lay hands on every single person. I, I would love to be doing that wherever anyone is. Come on down. I give you a hug. Welcome you to the family. Welcome you to Jesus. Because now is the time that we walk in hope. Now is the time. And so if this is you and you're saying, yes, this is me, this is me today, I need to know Jesus, yes. I'm just going to pray, and you just have a conversation with the Lord, you just tell him, but we're going to pray. And we are going to experience a move of God through this exact realm, in this exact time, in this exact way, because this is what needs to be done. People from the Northeast, West, and South, on every continent, People are going to come forth to know Jesus, the hope, the salvation, promises for the future. Come on down. Come on down. Receive him right now. You have nothing else to lose. Everything to give. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, our Lord, the Savior. Father, I know right now that there are many people that are hearing this that are choosing you. Father, we thank you for lives right now that have been filled with such hopelessness. And if you've already received Christ, just pray in agreement. Just stand and pray in agreement as we usher in. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you here. Every place that there is a person who is ready to receive you, Holy Spirit, be with them. We thank you that there are people from the north, east, west, south, from this continent to that, to the next, to the next, to the next, overflowing. That this is a time that we have not experienced, but we are experiencing now. Father, we thank you for the people coming to know you in this time. And if this is you, you just say, Jesus, I don't know you, but I want to. I've tried life my way, and I can't do it alone, and my life is a mess, and I need you. Jesus, I ask that you save me. I don't want this life that I've lived. Please be the center of my life as I surrender to you today. Please take away this pain. Take away the guilt. Take away the shame. Take away the drugs. Take away the pain and the torment. And help me, Jesus. And you just take all the time that you need. Thank you, Jesus. And you just stay right where you are. Father, I thank you for every believer that is listening to this is coming forth. Father, we stand today against the spirit of hopelessness and we rebuke it. We thank you for your hope. We thank you, Father. We pray for every precious soul who has come forth today 
that they are forever renewed in you by you because of you and for you. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we're raising up a new generation for you that will have hope. We call forth purpose. We call forth, Father, a new generation. We call forth, Father, that you save souls for you. Father, we stand against those that are seeking to devour their lives. We thank you that you save lives today and that many more will be saved from the Northeast, West, and South because of you. We thank you, Father, that this is a time that we rejoice, that your angels are rejoicing. And we thank you, Father, that we can proclaim your goodness. We praise you, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Those of you right where you're at, you just stay. Stay as long as you need to. And just feel his presence. Let go of those burdens. Let him fill you with his love and his hope. And know that he's never going to harm you. That he's going to pull you out. That pit. That you never have to go back. That you are a precious child of God. That you are worth saving. That your life is precious to him that you are worth more than the number of people you've slept with, that you are worth more than the drugs that you've done, that you are so worth it that he died on that cross for you. So just thank you. Just thank you. We thank you, Father, that you were so good to save all of us, Father, to save us from where, where we all once were. Praise you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. If you need a Bible, go to julieblur.com. And if you're one that gave your life to Jesus, just let us know. Because we're praying for you, and I always love getting getting the emails from people saying, I just, I just came to Jesus. We want to hear from you. We want to help you grow in your walk and come to know Jesus and live with hope and that future that he has for you. Everything you need to know is at julieblow.com. God bless you, saints. Stay faithful. Thanks for standing in agreement. We'll be back with more messages. Be so, so encouraged that Jesus loves you, and so do we. God bless you. Till next time. Bye, everyone.